Hey, thanks for tuning into the show. This is Ryan Reese with the Bubbles Advocate Podcast, and I'm here with uh, Tony, as you all know. And then we also got Matt Gill and Tim Nygaard. Is that how you say your last name, Tim? That, that is how you say my last name. Yeah. Wow, I've always did, wondered that myself. Do people give you a lot of trouble with that name? Um, yes. What do they yes. say? Uh, it's, well, I've gotten misspellings, uh, like, like, so Nygaard, N-Y-G-A-A-R-D, when people hear Nygaard, they yeah. spell it G-A-U or, you know, guard. Um, I've also gotten one that's really, really close to a racial slur that I'm sure that you can all just kind of fill in in your head uh, there. I see. I can see that yep, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys have been playing Kanama for a long time then. Yeah, yeah. for a while. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I started a month before the very first MKO. So that makes it pretty easy for me to track. So I, I, I've been playing eight years now. Right. And what did you wow, play? Eight decade? years ago. What did you place MKO? in that first uh, MKO? So that's kind of a funny story. Um, so I, like you I got said, got first. I started, <laughs> yeah. No, I started playing Kendama a month before the first MKO, and that was still early enough in my Kendama career, you know, quote unquote, that I thought that it was fucking stupid that people got together to play with this thing. So you thought it was, was stupid? I thought it was stupid. You know, like, I, like it was something like... You well, know, you're like, right. It is stupid. <laughs> it is stupid. Yeah, you know what? Stupid. <laughs> you but know no, what? So After eight that, years, that was... I decided... Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was the only MKO that I missed. And uh, Oh, so you didn't go to that one? I, I didn't. I didn't oh, know. Oh, because you thought it was just dumb. whack? <laughs> yeah, I just thought it was dumb. Like, like uh, my buddy's... Wow. Uh, so Noah Gizzi, uh Goose, he... Uh, oh, yeah. You know, he's one of the guys that got me into Kendama. We've been friends for you know, since before either of us played, and uh, and so it was him and then my one of my other good friends, Kelvin, who really got me into it. And they were telling me about MKO. You know, like there was a few other people from our local scene that no longer play that that were going up. And I was like, no, dude, that, that shit's dumb. I don't want to go. It's just gonna be a bunch of nerds playing fucking balling cup. <laughs> and, uh, I mean. You know, Eight I mean, years, it is. Eight years <laughs> later, I've been sponsored what? by like four different companies, and you know, it's like, it's yeah, like you became MKO. everything you hated. <laughs> Dude, right? <laughs> it's a bunch uh, of freaks. I'm a fucking nerd. That's pretty funny. I mean, yeah. When I first heard about events, I was excited as hell because I thought I was the only person on earth who played. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I got you. So okay, so you guys, so so Tim, you play for Dama on. I do. So, so like you said, you're a player now and you're sponsored by this company. Uh, what is like your guys' relationship like and what do you bring to Dama on? So I, uh, the, the, the way that I got sponsored by Dama on is actually pretty funny because there, there's <laughs> another player on Dama on, uh, Todd Pren, yeah. who I, every company that I've been sponsored by uh, he has also been sponsored by at the time that I have. So we've been, you know, we, we've been really kind of like in tandem like that all throughout the years. Right. And, uh, and he was on Dama on at the time, who knows, before we made Kendamas and everything, it was just purely clothing. And I made a Facebook post about how, like, it, it was something like, I miss being on a team with, with Todd Pren. And, uh, <laughs> fucking matt commented and was like well do you want to be and that was basically <laughs> it <laughs> wow that was pretty I easy mean, yeah yeah it was it was it was one of the easier sponsorships that i've gotten but that was so it had nothing also... to do with your skill or anything oh i mean <laughs> Mac, what did you to, see you, in him you'll have to ask mac on that one <laughs> um honestly um as you guys all know like i had a whole bunch of hate when i first got into fkc and what really turned the tides was Tim, he made a post on there and he was just like, hey, can we take the time to recognize Mac and the hard work that he does and how much, you know, uh, he's got a lot of hate and most people would just quit, but he's continuously elevated and progressed. And that really um, meant a lot to me, honestly. He just completely stroked you for the whole suggestion. <laughs> yeah. Problem. There you go. Exactly. I see. The old slow, the old I guess that's trip. fair. I mean, um, it paid off. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, no, but he's a, <laughs> you know, he's a really good player. Um, if his hip was, you know, ten years younger, he'd be outstanding. It's like your elbow. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah. We just if you dude, person. if you guys put together, yeah, you're like fucking Voltron. You could, there you go. You could make, <laughs> you should make a whole team of people who have like bone problems and show how you can <laughs> excel. You and then well, you do before... like a human pyramid with a kaiju. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I had uh, oh. rice and pajamas, we had this player that had one hand, and he was the one-handed wow. slayer. Oh, there you go. That's pretty yeah. cool. So, uh, speaking I like of, I remember what, what 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 was Risen? Like, I feel like you made resin kendamas, but then I also saw those other kind of like uh, uh, shittier kendamas. If I if I may be blunt with you, were those no. vine woods? Uh, these are vine woods. Yeah, Th- exactly. those. Are, yeah, hundred vi- uh, percent. I believe it was vibe wood. Vine, V I N. Was it N? No, yeah, I think if, I'm going to argue with that. It's Vive with a V. V A V. No, I'll do the old fact check. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's Tony job right there. It's Vive Wood. I bet you, Mac, I, I promise you right now, I will bet you $10 and I'll Venmo you. How about? I, I will, bet you it's. I'll send you a Kadama. I'll send you one of these really lame Blue's Clues mods. Okay. <laughs> All right, and oh, I'll, I'll send you. mean like this? Uh, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll send you a home media uh, care package. If, oh, there you go. It's, it's vibe wood. It's vine. Yeah, I see vibe on uh, AliExpress. Well, did you go to the Kadamas? Spell it. Vive. Vive? Yeah. V I V E. I'll be looking for that Blue's Clues Dama in the mail. They've even got, you can get holsters for 80 cents a pop. Hey, I will send you tracking. Good show. Oh, awesome. Well done. Well, all right, cool. I got another Kadama. That's great. There you go. Um, I'll be happy to play that thing. I actually think that's cool. I like the colorway. I don't know about the paw print. However, though, I do love Thomas that have that, that not so 70, 30. Like, what would you call that? Uh, but I, um, cause I it, cause, cause it it's like a 70, 30. It's just yeah. with a, well, there's like, there's the two stripes, but the one's really, really faint. Um, yeah. You actually can't almost can't even see it. There is yeah. another stripe on it. Right, but I like that about it, and and yeah. I think the uh, pink near the bevel is uh, cool too. I think it's a cool colorway. The concept is. Um, let me ask you about this. Yeah. Why why are companies you know make not making like truly original concepts that you know it's always based off of a show, it's based off of a shoe, it's yeah. based off. I mean, of, it's uh, just a, it's a cop out. You know, Kadama's been around for a long time, forty years for the association, so. To come up with an original colorway or design is rather hard. So I, I like to take themes or like my first one was just like I was looking through 90s um, patterns and stuff because I'm like I was born in 87, but I'm a 90s kid and I love collecting toys and vintage stuff. So I we see. dropped the we dropped the retro, the first right. one. See, I like so those just, Thomas. I really like your Thomas. I'm not going to lie. Bad. I, I agree. I, I think it. they have some good, some good designs yeah, like, I, I, aesthetically. On the but box. the designs and the make is good. I mean, even though I haven't yeah. played one, I can tell just by looking at it and from what other people have said. I can. And, and, and so, uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, when we were gonna make the kadamas, there was the option like, do we buy pre-made factory kens and just pump out a product, or do we wait, design a, a ken shape and then release it? And you know, some people are like, let's just pump out a Kadama. And, I, you know, I really didn't want to do that because I know the community. And if you don't have your own shape and own designs, you're going to get shit on. And yeah. I've already been there and I'm not trying to ruin yeah, my that's reputation. A so right. I just, you know, took the time and uh, developed the first Ken shape. And it's the the V1. And I wanted to pay a little homage to uh, when I first started, like 2014, 2015, um, with that shape. It's a little it's longer and it's like 100 millimeters from the bottom of the base cup to the uh i mean the base cup to the serato yeah i see it's a little bit longer so the luminaries weren't that great because too much weight on the back end but the slingers were amazing and so we just kind of progressed from there um the second v2 had larger cups and then um the v3 we reconfigured a couple things and it's uh it's much better than uh, the first one for sure, but we're not not quite there yet. We need a we need to do a couple things with the base cup. And I was talking to Tony about it the other day, and yeah, I can't wait to uh, see Tony that. Tony right here. Yeah, yeah. I, we were having a chat say, about Tony? Uh, Ken yeah. shape. We were, we were just uh, you know we were talking about uh, Ken Downs. We talked about all kinds of things, but uh, yeah, he sent me some some uh, some pictures and things, and we're mulling them over. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. So, so, okay. So when you made those resin kendamas, I mean, did you think anything would be different from wood? I mean, it's, it, I feel like by now you would know how to like shape a dama or design one. Yeah. Uh, because you, you, you have a lot of experience with them. And so mm -hmm. like, are you still struggling to find a correct shape, a kind of make a kind of, you well, know? The, the hardest part about it is the wait time from the manufacturer i can't put my hands on it because i don't know anybody locally that has a lathe where they can make it for me and i can actually fill the shape and see all the components right, where you can sort of test yeah. test yeah. blanks and, and i things. was talking to chad from soul kadamas and that's what he did with the one-up shape he had someone lathe it for him and then he sent that into the manufacturer so i just been yeah, kind of yeah. i just been kind of guessing like some aspects that i like and then i have my digital calipers and i'll just make all the measurements and i've been i'll draw it out and then uh, i have this guy that does it all in cad and uh he came up with 3d models and stuff for us and i, I showed tony them and yeah uh, it, it was a pretty cool process but then once you get it in hand then that's when you can really look at it and be like well the base cup is a little too heavy um lunars are not that great or the spikes too short and then mm. we just made adjustments uh and then what i did was i asked the community honestly i was like hey what do you think of the shape a lot of people liked it but then a lot of people were like well lunars are garbage and i'm like okay i i understand where you're coming from and i'm going to implement the changes for the next batch batch so it's going to be a lot better and uh but yeah the wait time is like a month plus to get uh kadamas and right now with the holidays it's like four months uh yeah and so with coronavirus, I'm sure it's difficult, you know, getting all that yeah. uh, When coronavirus together. Uh, hit, that's right when we were first uh, making Gadamas. And there was like a two-week wait, and there was a little bit of backup. But we only had to wait about a month total to get the first package. And when yeah. they ship it out, it's only three days they get to us. From so the, were the resin wow. ones also made overseas? No, the, the resin ones I made by hand. Like with a with a mold, right? Like you were just pouring yeah, them silicone, yourself. Yeah, a silicone mold, and uh, it was just a two part uh, epoxy. Like How a did resin. those sell? So, so you you made a lot of money off of those. No, not necessarily. I lost. That's money. not what I. I mean, I heard you. Uh, you were the only one doing that, right? No, definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> oh, you stole it from somebody. <laughs> no, actually, what yeah, happened? Wholesale was ripped the right. I, I honestly didn't know res was a thing. I didn't join FKC. And when I bought Ryzen from this guy, I, it wasn't like I started Ryzen. I didn't start. Oh, you bought the company. I was going to exactly. say, you should maybe oh, mention wow. that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So How much did it cost? This, uh, it was like two grand. No way. $2,000. Yeah. <laughs> Just for the to whole company. Wow. Yeah. Now. And yeah, so he, yeah. he, he had it all like LLC and all that? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. Wow. And the, what the problem was is he was doing some shady business deals. He was like a, a businessman and he was trying to work in the small market where he owned reskadamas.com, the domain name. So anybody right. who wants to buy his kadama goes directly to our website. And then I tried to get uh, that from him and he wouldn't do it. So it wasn't a turnkey operation. Um, he, I still had to buy a lot of equipment. I still had to do a lot of things. And the process that he, he showed me the process one time in the afternoon. So I really had to like develop it over time. And then um, right after I got the company, someone was like, Hey, why don't you join FKC? And I'm like, okay. So I go up there and I was just like showing the Kadama guy, <laughs> And then it was just like all hell broke loose. Little did you know you were about to yeah. make a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that, that guy that you, the guy that you yeah, bought the cool. company from, he had some yeah. kind of experience in, in resin manufacturing, right? So, exactly. I mean, that's not something he can just teach you in an afternoon. I mean, he came from a background yeah. in that. Well, right? the problem was, is he was, he was using uh, like a fast set resin. Then it would set in 10, 15 minutes. Well, with Chris, he would do a, a slower set and he would put it in a pressure pot and, and he would get all the air bubbles out. So the product was superior to ours. And then he would try to copy the colorways and he was calling it or like the same name like ink series or whatever it was and like i was just going with with what he had uh implemented in the beginning and then i put it out there and it was just like a hailstorm. and then i had to like try to change at that time dude i literally took like the last two thousand dollars that we had i lost my job and i was just thinking like what can i do to supplement some income until so you, i get another job you turn and, to kendama I don't know if that's the wisest choice. 
-hmm. it was a horrible choice and I lost a lot of money. (laughs) (laughs) So much money, yeah. Uh, But, you know, that actually propped me up and made me a little bit uh, wiser, you know. Uh, Yeah. I don't, I don't, I, it was hard to go through that because like I had a whole bunch of Kadama friends and here locally in Las Vegas, you know, Dave Mateo was here, uh, rest in peace. He, and then uh, freaking um, Kevin DeSoto. We had a whole bunch of players here and we would have competitions all the time. And as soon as I bought the company, it was just like, they all turned their backs on me. And it was, and it was, uh, it was sad, dude. It, it hurt. Um, why do you think they did that? Well, because the poor uh, business decisions that guy made, you know, having the domain name and pretty much copying it. And then a lot of people were saying, well, Res doesn't have the the market cornered on Res and Kadamas and which is true, but I understand the frustration because you spend thousands of hours and countless uh, amounts of money to develop a new product. And then someone comes along, just rips it off. Right. And I would be, I, I would be in the same shoes. I would be attacking that person also. Right. And, you just you didn't know you were doing it when you, right. Yeah. I didn't really understand the, the full scope of it. When I, first the level to which this person was God, deliberately yeah. taking ideas from someone else, as opposed yeah. to maybe it seemed like it could have just been a coincidence, but no, that yeah. person. Yeah. Was yeah, intentionally exactly. targeting. Yeah. Cause he was just like, well, I, I've been making stuff at a resin forever. I can just do this. And then, but then what happened was is when I bought the company, he wanted to be the supplier of all the molds. So I would have to pay him like $250 for the molds. And then I can only get about 50 Kadamas if I'm lucky out of each set of molds. So like the costs were like outrageous. And I just, you know, I, I screwed myself over by buying the company, but I learned a lot of things in the way, so it kind of panned out. You learned everything, uh, what not to do with Dama on. Exactly. Well, so then originally when you when you started Dama on, it wasn't about Kendamas, right? I mean, it was it was about Kendama, but you weren't making Kendamas. No. Clothing. Yeah, what happened right. was my wife was working at a screen printing and embroidery company, and uh, she would- That's get- how you're able to fucking print everything in this fucking planet. Is with yeah. that. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So she was getting an employee discount and I was getting like, uh, so you you know, said- I was getting a lot of cheap stuff. It's like 25 hats cost me $27. I'm going to tell you wow. something right now, Mac. Yeah. It's that the only keychain you need to make or the only keychain. Let me start over. I'm going to tell you <laughs> something right. I'm going to tell you something right now, Mac. The only keychain that is good for Kendama is this one right here i have that that's one too cool. how have i not only because you can do this with it and oh. that's a uh, useful thing Pilsner uh, well that's a that's an old school beer it sure is the old czech beer it was there like the go. highest selling uh, imported beer in the united states and like the i think before prohibition and then prohibition happened and it fucked them it's still <laughs> good still i'm still drinking it now it's good stuff anyway though um, I see what you're saying, how resin folded because um, you you just didn't really know what you really had on your how hands. Do you, how do you pronounce exactly. that? Ryzen? R- Ryzen, yeah. Yeah, I, was, I thought it was Ryzen, but I'm realizing now I've never... No, it's, yeah. it, it, from what I've heard, it's Risen, but I think... I'm pretty he just, sure. <laughs> he, he, yeah, you he, know what's funny is... must be confused. Uh, I was so hyped on it, and I had my YouTube channel. That's how I bought the company because he came on and i, I did remember that interview i did an interview with him and then he made a mod for us so it's like this is the mindless minutes mod oh and is that there, it right there let me see that yeah no so, way yeah yeah so <laughs> the, the funny thing is i got it in the mail like oh this is cool this is super durable snap like right <laughs> after i got it i'm like oh my god so like i hit just him up, testing like, to see if it was like exactly. see how it felt and you yeah. snapped it so I put some tape on it. It's all kind of wonky, but I keep it here in my like collection of, you know, things that I've done in the past, you know, like kind of I, an artifact right there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah. The, the, then we went to the wood Kadamas, but like you said, they're just the, the vibe or whatever you, whatever yeah, you, however, vibe you however you pronounce it. We, our, our early Skilderness Damas were vibe, those same vibe woods right off of Alibaba yeah. right there. Yep. And uh, we renamed them and tried to sell them for $20 to no avail. Yeah, I mean a lot Not of people. Do it. A lot of people start out that way, and yeah. you just don't know. Um, yeah. And then you start looking at the shape, and like a lot of the shapes kind of look alike. So it's it's 
that's why a lot of people are like, well, you're copying the shape. I'm like, no, everybody's copying the shape. It's yeah, like, yeah, there is no shape. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, the one thing I want to say is I do feel like Dama on and the Kandamas that in products you guys make, like I feel like it does have a different vibe than other companies. Do you feel that way? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it helps that we have a lot of artists on the team. We have Sarah and Derek and myself, and we all like contribute. And it's kind it's of like a, a collective vibe. Exactly. Tony, so what Sarah do you think does... about their vibe? I was going to say, I don't know if I can exactly put a finger on it. It's um, hard to put I, a finger I, on it, right? A little bit. It does feel like a small company, but at the same time, it's like, I, I'm the first one that comes to mind isn't one I want to name drop, but there's other smaller companies that have a different and and sort of distinct vibe of like this is a small company it's and like, it doesn't really have that necessarily either. well it's almost like the, so i think what you're talking about is a small company is like ran by one person where it's like clearly operated yeah. by a, a single presence it. you know i'm not saying you run it alone mac i'm just saying it does have that feel like other companies that are ran by one person but i feel yeah. like yours since you do include so many other people it looks like it's a lot bigger or it look it has this kind of um uh uh group mentality i think behind it like to where it's not it can't just be one person because it's so much different art on so many different products but i also think that does kind of hinder your style a little bit it's hard to there's so much it's kind of hard to pinpoint yeah what, what the soul of it is i understand yeah completely you know because we've had like numerous like it's not artists. consistent i think yeah yeah it's not like um stripes and you only do stripes i i understand right like, uh, right right but that's well, also not a bad thing no i mean we i use a lot of artists and um we did uh collabs with ink party and i've had other graphic artists around the world submit artwork and tattoo artists and i'm working on a really big uh collab right now with a really famous artist and uh and then i got another collab with a, a band and you know it's been i lo i just kind of are you I, an I artist? To, I am. Yeah, I went to the Art Institute of Seattle, and I, really, I went to business, yeah, I went to business school, and uh, I was telling Tony I went to uh, three different colleges, but I, the last two years of high school, I was in college, and then uh, then I went over to uh, university. I mean, uh, the Art Institute of Seattle yeah. before yeah. it closed down. It was like 2013 when I you went. went to two other schools and flunked out of them and decided just to go to art school. <laughs> yeah. They no, them yeah. out. exactly yeah, yeah i see okay do you design a lot of stuff are, so are you one of the artists for your company i mean yes and no i put a lot of input input into it but i give people tasks so derek is solely on the clothing aspect so all of his designs that's pretty much a lot of our clothing and then sarah she designs all the the tamas so sarah and i will talk all the time and i, I would yeah. tell her hey it would be kind of cool if we did this. Like Dallas was hitting me up. He's like, dude, you need to make that uh, the, the 90s cup, the solo cup design. And I, I told Sarah, I'm like, look, can you do that for me? And she whipped up a couple uh, mock-ups, like three or four. And then I have a Facebook community. Uh, it's called our group called uh, Dama on Community. And I just put it out there. I'm like, hey, which one do you like most? One, two, or three. Which stripes do you like the blue on top or the, uh, the pink yeah. on the bottom? And yeah. I really just got the feedback and they really helped design it. And uh, it was, you know, it's a fun so you're telling me that Dallas Lanius came up with that. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah, way. Yeah. I'll be. I, damned. I, I sent him, I sent him a, a Kadama for it, for his help. He wanted right. to name it, but I'm like, no, no, no. I can't ah. do that, <laughs> he wanted to name it the John or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. I did not there's... know that the Philly special. Yeah. No, wow. he was like my biggest troll when I got on FKC because he was a huge. <laughs> Isn't he res. everybody's? Yeah, well, yeah. he's, he's yeah. specifically a, a Res fan fanboy. Boy. I mean, that like, kid loves he really Rez. is. Yes, he was obsessed with those. He put me on those. Yeah, and then like you know, I mean, not for no kinda, reason. They're good, can or they were. Just started talking and they don't make. Them. Know, it, the rest is history. I call him baby girl in the chat. It's so funny. Right. So Dama on is separate from Evo Kendamas. Yeah. Yeah, so, completely. but was there some, I feel Separated. like there was some, wasn't there some sort of partnership or something? Yeah, there was. In the beginning of Dama on, um, Kyle, the owner of uh, Evo, um, he was on my team and he was making Kadamas 
but he kind of stopped for a while. And then at MKO, the last MKO before they switched, um, he brought some Kadamas and uh, we loved it. He makes amazing Kadamas. Like the shape is stellar. I, I love it. It's probably one yeah. of my favorite shapes out of any Kadama out there. And his crafts, craftsmanship is amazing. So um, it's all hand turned by him in the U.S. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He does have a hand turn right. series, and he does have the the factory like jam. Now he has the factory like jammer. Yeah, stuff. Exactly. I hadn't seen that honestly. They're That's pretty good. I, I have them. Fa- yeah, fa- we- factory jammer, as in like a like a common regular no, shape. He- yeah, I mean, he he designed the shape, and that's what the Genesis uh, series yeah. is. And, but it's produced uh, overseas. It's not hand turned yeah, by hand. Yeah, 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 it's the yeah, same yeah. factory. Yeah, it has like the, the factory, has a like double slip ring. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we just, we, you know, one day uh, we just parted ways. Uh, to keep it short, there was just some conflicts there, and we just parted ways. I mean, no. Yeah. No harsh feelings or anything. We right. We no, it, ha- it happens in business. I mean, that's the kind of yeah. that that happens in uh, anywhere. Yeah. So we had like a big. You weren't team evolving. Team. Yeah. We had, there. You go. We had a big team. So it was like his team and Damon's team, and then we all just kind of split, and people made the decision like, which team do I want to be on? And then, you know, uh, Tim stayed, Sarah stayed, Todd, Derek, and uh, you know, Derek's been one of my. Uh, my favorite Kadama players, you know, I, I consider him a really good friend and he's been on both Ryzen and Dama on teams and same with uh, Tristan. He, you know, Tristan's a slayer. He's out of uh, Tacoma, Washington. And, uh, he's been slept on for a while, but that guy. You're not amazing. doing enough. You got to put him out there. When's the Dama on video coming out? I mean, we dropped one at it. I mean, it's just so hard to uh, get everybody so what I've been doing is before everybody's complaining about their video quality, some people will film on cell phones. Some people will film on a GoPro or whatever. So I just, I told my players that I will buy them GoPros, the newest model. So we all have the same oh, video quality. Right. So when we go out there, uh, when it's your mod, I'll buy you a GoPro and then we release your mod. And you, now you have that GoPro to get the POV shots and all that stuff. So now I see why you're doing the creative edit contest. Yeah, because you want to exactly. make sure that these people have high quality cameras, and you don't want to buy them a GoPro. No, I was <laughs> you're like next GoPro. person in here better already have one. Better only yeah. have your own GoPro and be a good player, or else you're not getting on the team. <laughs> the, the sponsorship contest for the Flow team, and uh, we got one person that we've been eyeing for a while, and we're gonna most likely move him up to the uh, pro team. And um, but yeah, we're we are dropping uh, player mods now. Probably at the end of this month will be the first, the very first Dama on player mod. So is Tim, Tim is Tim's getting a a, a pro mod? No, yeah. it's not. no, it's it's no. Todd. Todd's getting a pro. Oh, mod. Todd is getting I'll be a getting pro one mod. eventually. Uh, I well, bet- you kind of had one, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, you're wearing isn't that your isn't that your shirt there, Tim? This yeah. one, yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Um, my so my my first run of my mod was done through Evo and Kyle and yeah. everything. You know, that's when there you, was like 13 of them that actually made it out or something like that. Yeah, and, how are uh, those getting painted? Those they had painted were, Thomas. The, the, factory. The, the Thomas, yeah, they were factory painted Thomas and the Kens were hand turned. Yeah, okay, Kyle. that's okay. Yeah. All right, I got you. So I got a few of them. Uh, and then there was like, we kind of did sort of like an underground sort of crowdfunding sort to speak yeah. for, for some wood to, to actually turn. And then those people who who donated some money got uh, got a mod as well, okay. um, yeah. and then that kind of boost, you know. So we were able act- to actually produce uh, a run of my hand turned mods, and then uh, and then right about then was when Evo and Dama on split. So it was only like the one the one run of my mods, and then I yeah. had a bunch of leftover Tamas that I just kind of did right. my own thing with. Yeah. So that was just kind of your own mod. I mean, would you consider that a pro mod? Did I mean, you, I, I, I did you make I, money I, from it? Y- yes <laughs> and no. Um, well, were you were you so, getting commission on it or was? Yes, I. I mean, I, I was. So this is the he made this is the ten dollars. <laughs> this is <laughs> well. So this is the real. Max just gave it to him for being a good sport. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I mean, give I give all my fifty percent, fifty percent. Um. So so ten dollars. Uh, 
That was, no. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the kind of that was kind of the thing with my with my run was so from the first run I got you know my cut of it or whatever. Um, mm. I wanted to use my portion of of uh, my profits from my first mod, and I bought a bunch of more beats so that we could really boost up a second drop. Got you. And then I had a. Uh, so I I had purchased the beach and then like beach that, blanks like to turn yeah to turn. exactly yeah. yeah yep and then right when I had uh, purchased the beach was when the companies had split so then there was all all this leftover beach and I kind of told Kyle you know like fucking make me a mod and send me the Thomas and we'll just call it good on that yeah yeah and then th- that's kind of how I got in possession of uh, a bunch of my Thomas that I have now slapped on to a million fucking soul one-ups. <laughs> <laughs> they fit really well. So I have one thing to ask um, you guys here that um, it's pretty questionable and I need some explanation. I need some sort of explanation for this um, because I know what this reference is and I'm not happy that I do, but uh, you're actually making um, shirts and hoodies of this final trick graphic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tony, do you know what this is? Uh, I, you know, does this 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 image doesn't bring back any sort of memory from middle school it, or anything. It, do, it does, it does indeed. All right, uh, so do, do you know what I'm talking was, about here? Uh, yeah, it's buried deep in there, but it's in there. So oh, it's it, oh, it's deep, all right, and it's in there. One, one guy. <laughs> one, so. This, if just a little bit about my background of how I'm familiar with this, and I probably shouldn't say it over this, but when I was in middle school, I probably watched every single. Once I saw Two Girls One Cup, I was yeah. hooked on those Pain videos. Olympics. I I watched all of it Meat routinely. Spin. Most people went home and like played video games. I went straight to the computer and Run.com. I tried to find all of it. Blue Waffle, you name it. Um, yeah. We, I, I found it. It wasn't just me. It was me and my friends, but that's still no excuse. So yeah. when I saw that, I was, too weak. I was literally um, scrolling through Instagram and that comes up and I saw the, con- first of all, I just only noticed the Kendama and then I actually see the whole image slowly and it brought me back <laughs> to the horrific <laughs> memories of, 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 that my mind has now. And so, ha- have you already printed those? Have like, what's the deal with that? Well, um, now we. And why the hell did you want to make shirts <laughs> of that? Okay, it's so funny. Uh, Derek, he's an edge lord, dude. He likes to push the buttons, and we have to kind of reel him back a lot. But I really thought that was hilarious. Um, <laughs> it is. So it is. Like, it is it, funny. Let's just let's just go with it. I, I didn't really want to advertise it too heavily, and I just kind of wanted to throw it up on the site and. But uh, yeah, dude, uh, it was hilarious. You, you call it um, one guy, one jar. When I, I called it glass ass. There you go. Do you know that guy just put some like gauze up his butt and went to work like an hour later? No. Like, uh, yeah. There was like a next room too or something. Was it, was it you? I mean, how do you know that? Yeah, no, actually, no, I did a lot of research <laughs> when that uh, came out. And uh, Tom, wow, you were that enthralled by it. You're like, I must no, know. Tom was, like, Tom was like, dude, I know all about this guy. He was like going off in the chats and he was telling us about this other video. And it was just that video is disturbing. The other one the guy does. And then. Um, oh, Jesus. Yeah. No, I just thought it was hilarious. And I mean, so for, for people yeah. who don't know what that is, what happens in that? Yeah, I'm, I myself may be mixing video. it with some other scarring. You explain it, Mac. I think you know it better. You go ahead. <laughs> Sounds know, like you I know. Mean, <laughs> no, I mean I was there first, and uh, yeah, the the jar disappears. It's kind of like Dark Knight when uh, Joker made the the pencil disappear. Just to put it lightly, Tony, it's a uh, oh, no. the camera is like on the floor, and it's filming a glass mason jar. And uh, this man, you can tell he's a man because he has hairy legs, and you also see his dick and balls later, but. Uh, <laughs> he squats and sits on the jar and uh, inserts it. Uh-huh. And then um, uh, he shuffles around a bit and it implodes inside his anus. Mm-hmm. And so he now has uh, shards of glass. In his I don't know how he didn't die, to be honest with you. Like, I mean, I, I just remember the, oh, <laughs> the, the sound yeah, of when it happens. It sounded, oh. 
And then he was fishing. <laughs> his hand oh yeah. Uh, and so it's, uh, I know. I know. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's enough. There. Um. So uh, yeah, use that as B roll in the next Dama on edit. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Dana. Yeah. That'd be All fun. right. All right, moving on. Um, one thing I want to talk about is uh, after I just got back into FKC, Dallas was telling me that um, it was the perfect day to do it because uh, you left FKC as an admin, Tim. So there was a, you know, no jumper is super controversial and everyone has an opinion on it. I don't want it. I'm not even going to try and get into that. Every no jumper post in the FKC, there's just fucking drama on, usually started by Dallas and then ex exacerbated by fucking Tony. It, it would go back and forth between fucking usually Tony and fucking Dallas and then Martin will jump in and it'll just blow up. <laughs> Inevitably, comments will get reported and then admins have to get involved. And I just got fucking sick of it because, it, dude, it's been every goddamn day. If you know you're going to be an admin of fkc though you got to expect kind of shit like that you do you do and you know like it, it's 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 one of those things like i've done it for fucking years man i've just had enough yeah you know, like, well you got the kendama out of it i saw that <laughs> fkc kendama yeah well dude no that's that's super fucking sick dude from from masako out of japan who uh hoshi had paint for me and that, right and that's that, that you know that's something that oh i thought no jumper made life. it <laughs> yeah, uh, Adam Perry. Uh, they're all oh, okay. the community, those guys. I mean, really. Yeah, I, I thought I was gonna say. I thought you were talking. To, you know, you say FKC, but then he gave you a kendama. But it was Masako. I was mistaken. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I made I made a whole post about just not fucking tagging admins and everything, and just because it's always fucking adults that that are causing all these issues. It's never goddamn kids, and uh, you know, just act like adults, fucking. I made a whole post about it, and throughout the process, I kind of let my own feelings of how I feel about Adam-22, and they're not good. I'll just leave it at that. But, um, you know, like, my whole point was, like, you can you cannot support Adam-22, but still treat those who do with respect. You know, it's not just because they, they, they buy a goddamn toy. You don't have to go and ride their ass about it, you know, and just make them want to quit Kendama altogether because they bought a no-jumper. Right. And, you know, like my, and like my whole thing was like, I fucking really dislike Adam 22 and his role in Kendama. I wish, you know, like, you know, if he plays it, whatever, I just wish he wasn't like a whole, I just wish it wasn't a whole thing. Um, but then at the same time, like my friend Noah Geezy, who I mentioned earlier, he's on the team. And I fucking love Noah, you know, like I, I, I know several other people on the team. Like I like the team. I don't have anything against them, but, um, I guess a lot of them have taken it personally, which I understand, you know, people fucking ride max ass and I take it personally too. I, I want to stick up for them, but I mean, no, like, so I, I understand why they, why they all got heated about it and why so many people did. But I mean, I was just trying to say like, dude, fucking just be nice, be, be respectful. You don't have to fucking just make a whole goddamn thing. Every time somebody posts a new Kendama and I, I yeah after it became a whole goddamn thing and I heard that a bunch of the team members were upset with me and everything, I just, I decided that it wasn't worth losing potential friendships over yeah. like this, this drama. Right. So that's kind of, you know, which is, I feel like, kind of like it, if, oh, yeah. and I don't even know if I'm saying her name, right. I, I really, I'm feel sorry if I, you're probably not. I'm probably it, not. It's, yeah. Right. It, it's pronounced Susan. I believe it's Masako. <laughs> it's it's Jill. <laughs> um, but uh, but no, I mean, so that's kind of like what what I thought about when when uh, Kendama Go was like, oh, I don't know if I can be cool with you because Ryan Reese is my boy. It's like, man, are you gonna seriously not be friends with me because of a fucking Facebook group? Like, yeah, uh, I, I, I don't know. I think he was, he was most kidding. likely joking. Yeah, I, you know, I'm sure I'm sure he was, but you know, like, yeah. I don't know. But still, to even like kind of joke about feeling that way, I mean, I feel like there's a there's a lot of that. Uh, I feel like that was multiple people. I think that was just a few months after like we had booted you too. So, yeah, like, I, yeah. I, I don't know. You know, it might have still been kind of fresh. You know, like that was yeah. that was a whole fucking deal. Like, damn, dude, people ride or die for skillderness. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I made it look that way at least. <laughs> <laughs> that was the narrative that you wanted to, to push yes forth. exactly <laughs> yeah. but, but, it, but it was true death. yeah it, exactly right, right right it's funny speaking of dama on and all the things that you guys do together like as a company tim and mac i feel like um you guys you know 
you like each other, you're good friends and all, and uh, you've um, supported Kendama in different ways. And besides just making products and selling it to the community. And, but, but I will say one of those, I don't know if you guys sold it, but it, I did see Tim wearing something. There was a shirt. I, I, I'm trying to remember what it fucking said. Bear me a Kendama. Bear me, Bear me a Kendama. Kendama. Right, that was right, a right. That I came, dude, that right, was a one off right. that I came up with and I love that shirt so right. much. That's because you're an alcoholic? Dude, not even. <laughs> he actually does I, drink. I drink like twice a year. Oh, oh okay. It's a I've, got, um, friends, I think. I've got my, my, obviously I've got my Paps and a Paps koozie. I don't know if I can contort myself in such a way that you can see them, but I'm actually wearing Paps socks. Really? You got the Crocs on? Oh, of course. Okay. No, I, I, Let I me see the socks. The, uh, oh wow, I like that. This, oh, is, a, that. this is a good. Wow, position. that's the look. That's a PBR drinker right there. <laughs> there you go. It's oh, a whole vibe. Nice. Uh, no, I, I came up with it as an homage to uh to uh, uh the office. <laughs> the office, yeah. right? Oh, also, got you. Hey, okay. Tim, it's yeah. like a sponsorship. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna. What what shirt do you want off the website? I'll make it for you and I'll send it to you. He's like, hey, can you just make me a custom shirt? And I'm like, yeah, I can do whatever you want. And I just, you know, whipped it up for him, and the rest is history. What does that mean? You're me a do. Uh, so th there's a scene in the office where uh, Jim and Andy are driving to uh, uh, to a paper sale at a high school, and uh, Andy is just being fucking typical annoying Andy, and he's saying like, "Beer me that water," or something like that, because uh, beer me the beer, CD, beer me that disc. Oh yeah, fucking you know it kind of catches Jim off guard. And he, oh, I see. Know, like beer me and like yeah, yeah beer me. Beer. Got He's it. like, oh, I just like I like to say beer me. He's like in a frat or some shit. Yeah, it, so, it, it, gets, it gets a laugh like a quarter of the time. Gaia, Gaia. So, uh, why don't you like to drink? Um, it's not even like I don't. Have I don't you ever know. been drunk? Just, oh it's yeah, too cool. Yeah, you no, know, no, you no, wouldn't no, want to do what, something that would make you look cool. The, the few, <laughs> the few times that I drink a year, dude, I go pretty hard. Yeah, you get um, fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Is but that like I, uh, during Christmas or New Year's or your birthday or just like um, on your own? It's usually Kandami events. Ah, uh, okay. But like afterwards, you know, right, like when, right. it's, when Let there's loose. a bunch of spectators. When you're not um, on stage. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Oh, yeah. Um, you don't just take out a gallon Ziploc at uh, Mako full of weed? <laughs> well, it, it, dude, it, it depends on the event too. So like at, at like Dom and the D, it's not so kid, it's not so like, uh, centered around kids like nako yeah, so like yeah. I, I might walk around with a beer or something you know around for like domino d but like nako I'll, I'll usually keep the drinking to my room or like you know whatever um, yeah alone by yourself in the dark but like uh <laughs> like to, a true uh, artist yeah to get like in a serious subject a lot of my life i spent like living with an alcoholic and it like yeah. runs in my family pretty strongly so it kind of scares the shit out of me yeah so you kind of seen know, the negative effects firsthand so you kind of yeah yeah you know, and it, it's one of those things it's like i i like it too much you know yeah. so like i know i know i can't like yeah yeah fully indulge in it or yeah. else you can really go off the deep end more or less i just yeah, look yeah. at it as like i inherited my you know drinking skills yeah. That's why I'm so good at it, you know. <laughs> oh, there you go. Mac, are you in, I, I, were you vaping something? Yeah, yeah, I just got a little vape. What do you is is it marijuana or tobacco? No, just it's tobacco. It's oh, like cannabis. Uh, it's the juice. Cannabis sativa. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Mac, tell me how you reached out to Polly Shore to be on his podcast. I just started commenting a lot on his uh <laughs> on his youtube channel and he just recently moved to las vegas and then i was just like dude Polly shore lives 10 minutes away from me like down the street no and shit i figured out exactly where he lives so i'm just you went to his house it. you're gonna I'm, get well, a goddamn restraining order before you're on his podcast yeah, <laughs> shore is one of those if you watch his you his uh, youtube channel it's crazy dude he's he's lost it for sure but uh He's like, I'm trying to get in on that. <laughs> yeah. that what are you doing on this show? I want to get into their camp. So that's, you know, it's my Do a collab with Polly Shore's podcast. We wanted to pitch to you. Um, what do you think about Bevel's Advocate mod? I'm 100% down. Let's do it. Yeah. You want to do it? Yeah, yeah. do it. Yeah, do it. <laughs> How many that, would you that was easier than I thought it was. Yeah, anyway. we thought we were going to have to battle for that. <laughs> we <laughs> no, thought you were going to be like, fuck no, fuck you guys. Is that why you brought me on here? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of a gap between drops, but uh, we still have 
um, a bunch of sticky uh, beach damas. And then we have that Todd Ma drop in here soon. I can't wait for that. Um, it's really, really cool. Uh, Todd designed it. He's done a lot of cool stuff for it. And, uh, and now you have the really Bevel's Advocate mod coming out. Yeah, the Bevel's coming Advocate soon. Mod. Yeah, and then I got like the, we can I got, send oh, you the no. colorway. We have the logo, and we can make it those colors. Yeah, you were saying, really like uh, Ryan, you don't like the paw print over the over the string hole. Mm -hmm. uh, I like, you know, I've always been into like a circle, like a dot over the string. Right, hole. it's like I a like, tracking dot. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think like the uh, the little Tama on the the logo, the little devil guy over top of the string hole. Absolutely, I I'm yeah. all for it. See, that's a circular design. I mean, I guess that paw print is too. But I yeah. Yeah, for a top Tama design, hell yeah, that'll totally and work. Some, and put some hot rod like flames on there. No What's that? I want, I want I want like Guy Fieri style hot rod flames. Oh, there you like. go. <laughs> and so, what shape would that be on if uh, when it gets made? It would be either most likely the V four, the one that we're gonna um, update. Wow. The next batch we're gonna put in a a new. I'm gonna tool a whole new shape. Yeah. Just uh, our new V three point five because all we did with the between the three and the three point five is deepen the um, the booty hole by five millimeters. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say was, I could use a little more of that. I think. Yeah, it was fifteen millimeters from the bottom of the base cup in, and we made it twenty, and uh, it helps a lot. And the the weight is still not quite right. We need to shorten the uh, sword up a little bit, probably like two to three millimeters. And I, I'm thinking about making the actual shaft a little wider. Um, really fucking well, like it, dude. Deepen the booty hole, <laughs> widen the shaft. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Give it some it's, girth. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta lick that bevel and touch that wood. The girth quake. Well, so I'm gonna uh, be uh, on the cutting edge of that with the with the newest shape. With the with the Bevel's Advocate, yeah. uh, there you go. Wait, wait. What should we call it? We can't just call it the Bevel's Advocate mod. I mean, it's got to be catchy, right? Like, uh, yeah. uh, BA mod. BA? Yeah, you got the BC mod and the badass BA mod. mod. I like that. There you dude. go, dude. All dude, right. My 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 PlayStation handle is Tim Badass. <laughs> wow. T TBA man. That's I need not, a new, why uh, isn't that your Instagram, Instagram handle? handle actually. Oh, there you go. Or, yeah, I'll I'll use that. I'll be Tim Badass. Yeah, Tim Badass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, you're Tony Badass. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> he should be just Tony Soprano. Tony Serato. Oh, yes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I see you guys' the podcast. I really like the name. It's catchy as hell. I was telling my wife the other day, and she, like, chuckled. She's like, yeah, that's really clever. And I was like, yeah, I'm kind of jealous that I didn't come up with it. You guys day. see how I got a sponsorship? Yeah, it's easy. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Max is easy. Max really easy. He's just dishing yeah. it out. You just gotta ask him. The it's old bro I want to give you a compliment, dick, and I'll let you make a clap. Right, okay. right. <laughs> wow, this actually t turned out to be quite something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Tony, did you change your name? What did we decide yeah, on? I have it up Max right now. So, I right now I have typed in. Uh, See if you can even see it here. It's gonna be backwards. Here, hold this. Tony Serrato. Tony Serrato. Do you think people will get Tony Soprano reference though? No. You think it's no, they won't. Cut? No. So, but he doesn't want to be. Why don't you want to be Max Norcrox? You know, as much as I'd love to build my persona around uh, a, a, another Kendama players. <laughs> yeah, look at that boy. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Look at him, Max Norcrox. Max oh. Morcrox. <laughs> More crocs, boy. Sexy boy. You look like you'd be oh. Max Norcrox's <laughs> boyfriend. <laughs> well, he, if, if anyone's gonna date someone that looks like themselves, that looks like, like your grinder profile. Man. It is. Man. <laughs> wow. So, um, um, be so right. <laughs> what's that? Tim's over there swiping right. Yeah, oh, he yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. I saw Tony's phone oh, light Tim, up. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are Kendama players so, like, insistent on calling out people who, like, cheat? Well, I mean, if, I if, if, if it's in a competition, that's one thing. But if it's, like, yeah. on someone's story or, like, Instagram, I don't fucking care, man. I, You know, it's... Would I, you I still know. like their post? Yeah. I mean, if I like the person. Well, that might encourage them to keep handing their tricks. It might. Do you, you hand, it sounds like you hand your tricks. I do not. <laughs> I'm going to go through your I Instagram one by one tonight. I was tempted to make a post over the past couple of days because I've been getting getting a little bit more uh, engaged. He's on famous my... now because yeah, of uh, the show. Now. 
<laughs> oh, there you go. It's gotten to his head. Right. Yeah, right. some of those like 250 views have trickled After down this uh, post, yeah. he's going to demand his cut for the um, Beveled Advocate mods. <laughs> no, I think there was something in the in the waiver that, that said oh, right, I don't get right, royalties. Right, right. I own it. But yeah, app. since yeah. I've been on the, yeah, something about that sex slave, something. Right. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I've been on my Instagram more. And uh, yeah, I was tempted to make a post about it. Be like, hey, you know, drop your handles. I'll follow you. But then I was like, I'm not going to watch these people's clips probably I'm like, <laughs> i don't really care <laughs> i don't really care <laughs> like, right right that's all funny. oh i'd love to be more engaged but i wish i was don't. like that more i care too much that's the thing with me it's like there's so many people who come up to me and be like wow you must really love kendama and i'm just like you have no fucking idea how much i hate it actually but it's like watching a car accident i can't i can't seem to uh pull my head out of it uh but um anyway i'm gonna wrap it up here i want to thank you guys for all being on the show i appreciate it thanks for taking the time to do this and uh, yeah no problem of course uh, man uh thank you mac thank you tim uh you know guys check out bevel's advocate on instagram check out check out hone media check out dama on and uh check out um tony what's your new handle now well, I, I still have uh, Tony Serrato in there, but I think we, I don't know if that's too much. We, it's, we, not, we gotta, it's not. <laughs> we're going for yeah, it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah, we'll, see, right. we'll give it 24 hours. Dude, we'll you give it 24 dress hours. Up but... like Max, dress up like Max, hire a taxi driver, have some Crocs on, make an edit. Dude, that'd be so awesome. Break your fucking leg. Alrighty, guys, I'll talk to you next time. Peace. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Ha, ha, ha.